Hey guys, Brian here. I just wanted to go over my Kipper Tie Revolva adapter here. And it is serial number 12, so it's one of the first production models. And I wanted to go over what it does, what it solves, and why I think it is a great upgrade for your Komodo. While it's not the cheapest option, the functionality and utility that it provides is definitely well worth the money. Um, I will say that there is also a PL version, and that came out way before, but the EF is fairly new, and I think it took longer because unlike a lot of other, I guess you would call them dumb adapters, it does not send any electronic info, which you definitely need to give autofocus and lens control to an EF mount. So Kipper Tie is a company based in the UK, and they create accessories for RED cameras, including diffusion filters, lens mounts, and even media for RED cameras. Now, I will say I'm not sponsored by them in any way, I have no connection with them, I paid full price just like you would, which was about 1400 pounds or 1800 US dollars. But I am a huge fan of their build quality and their extremely thoughtful design. And I'll go over why they provide very elegant solutions design-wise to RED cameras. If you could like and subscribe to this channel, it would really help me make more content. And I've also provided links in the description below for all the different accessories and parts that I use for my Komodo. So what is the Kipper Tie Revolva? At its core, it's an RF to EF mount adapter that provides an integrated behind the lens filtration via these cartridges that you can exchange. So with the filter cartridge, you just put it in the cartridge slot and there's a very satisfying snap where it's now into place. And there's a knob that you can just simply lock it in position so you don't actually bump the ND. This particular one has ND.6, ND1.2, and ND2.1. So why is something like this needed? Well, if you look at the OEM Canon RF to EF adapter, it's honestly just a bunch of plastic. It's $100 and Canon never designed it for cinema use. It's meant for still lenses, so it doesn't provide the rigidity that you need for heavier lenses and also different lens accessories like a map box or different motors to go on the lens. How it mounts on the camera is just a simple twist and lock and you can actually see that there's a lot of play in it. What happens with this amount of play is that when you focus the lens or happen to have a tight lens and a strong motor, the entire image could shift when you just rack focus. The chin strap that Kipper Tie provides, if you add it into your package, adds another mounting point which adds rigidity and support to the lens mount. So this will definitely allow you to support the heavier lenses and the heavier setups that you might need. And by doing this, it minimizes the amount of play on the mount and it minimizes the amount of image shift that you can have when you're racking focus. So the chin strap doesn't just provide support, but it provides different mounting points as well to mount different accessories. And this might just be a personal preference for me, but I don't really trust putting a $10,000 lens on a cheap $100 plastic lens mount. Another thing that I was looking forward to with the Kirpa Tai Revolva is the reintroduction of a positive lock system. You can see that you just twist it in and you twist this down and now it's solidly locked in place. And that's something that obviously PL mounts have and the older red DSMC 1 and 2 EF mounts have and it's nice to see this back on the Komodo. So what does the Kipper Tie Revolva solve? Well, for me it solves a lot of filtration issues and being able to provide behind the lens filtration is usually preferable over matte box filtration. So when you're using a map box and a filter on that map box, you can get internal reflections, which you'll see in your image. And you also get reflections off the filter that can kick back onto a subject. If you've ever used Panavision map boxes, they have an ARF tray, which is called an anti-reflective tray, just to angle the filter so you don't get that sort of kickback. Another solution that the Kipper Tie Revolva provides is a quick way to change NDs and have an accurate variable ND filter. So when you're using the standard variable NDs from like Tiffin or something, you don't exactly know where your exposure is because you don't have dedicated stops. So with this, you know you're at two stops of ND, four stops of ND, or seven stops. So, you know, when I'm lighting to a certain stop, I know exactly where my exposure is at and I can accurately meter it with my light meter. And as you're changing filtration, there's a very satisfying magnetic snap that snaps the filtration in place. Now let's take a look at the actual performance of the ND filters. Kipper Tai states that they use best-in-class ND filtration, so we'll see if there's any actual color shift or even IR pollution at the heavier NDs, like seven stops.
Overall, there's minimal color shift even with seven stops of filtration. There's no IR pollution as evident by my black shirt. You can see that at ND 2.1, there is a slight color shift towards blue or green, which we can see in the vector scope. But this is definitely within a very easily correctable range. Overall, I'm definitely impressed with its performance. The sharpness is still there, all the clarity is there, and it really has a very minimal effect on the image. So now, nothing is without its downsides, and let's look at the different downsides that the Kipper Tie Revolva has. The first thing is that you can see that the cartridge protrudes upwards, and what happens is that it provides some incompatibility with other accessories on the market right now. You know, if you see the wooden camera's cage, they actually provide a dedicated Revolva riser to have a solution for that. In my instance, the ratcheting knob on my top handle interferes with the cartridge, so now I have to offset the handle, but really that's not a huge issue because I would like to offset it anyways so I can have access to this top screen. It definitely doesn't make it unusable, it just makes it a little more annoying to put on, but for me that's definitely worth the trade-off. Another downside is the cartridge slot is not weather sealed and it could be possible for sand or dust to get in it. While I will say that the tolerance is extremely tight and it's very unlikely for that to happen, but it's something to keep in mind and to make sure that you're not getting any excess debris in it because obviously your, sens your sensor will then get dirty. So this is just kind of a more nitpicky thing, but to unlock is clockwise and to lock is counterclockwise. And for me, that's counterintuitive to any other positive lock system and it's just something that you have to get used to. It's a little bit annoying at first, but you know, when you're changing lenses, you just have to be extra mindful that you don't try to twist it too tight in the other direction. So while it's not an issue for EF lenses, PL lenses do have an issue where if the rear element of the lens protrudes too far, you can actually impact the glass. And that's something you really have to check compatibility on their website for, and Kippertai has some documentation on how to measure it and how to see if your lenses will be compatible with it. For EF, I don't think many EF lenses protrude, so I'm not worried about it for now, but if I do, I'll let you know. And there you have it. That was just my quick rundown on the Kippertai RF to EF mount adapter. I hope it helped, and please let me know in the comments if you have any other questions. I've been shooting with this a ton already, and I've been absolutely loving it, so I think it's a great investment to make, and I definitely think it's one of the better purchases to make for your Komodo. Thanks.